Hello everybody, welcome back to Wampleville. And welcome back to some Song of Ice and Fire. We've got this. Cold Hands, Night's Watch. We'll kind of do a little bit of mashup between this box art and now you got this picture down here. So maybe a little bit of a lighter color on on our elk slash stag over here. We'll do the usual, I think, dark stuff on him though. Uh, we got Mars Blackout on the palette from... That's going to be from Gamlin, as opposed to our usual uh, wrong, wrong shelf here. Yeah, Mars Black going to be from Gamlin this time around. I just want to give this uh, some tests. Either Landrast. Yeah, I thought today was Saturday. I was like, holy smokes, got to get this going because I'm going to have to get up really early tomorrow morning. But uh, no, that's not quite the case. Hey there, hell again. Great to see you again. And Rascal, thank you so much for joining me here. So painting badly, I hope that you're doing well also. Now I also have this little base here. We, we just uh, put some very, very quick basing bits on there from, here, let me move this over this way. Mars Black here and there. Eh, nothing crazy. So here's some of our, again, Van Dyke Brown, whatevers. Maybe not quite so much thinner in there now. We got some of the Mars Black going on there. We'll be doing our usual thing where we take it away. So, Mafia, uh, hope that you had yourself a really great stream. And again, if there's anything you want to share in the chat, you just uh, go ahead and do that there. So, yeah, unfortunately, cannot change that uh, while I'm actually streaming here. It uh, only can only can be done after the fact, pretty much. Hey there, Artemiko. So definitely an oily fans. I think wasn't that uh Oh gosh, didn't Stila wasn't that her? Actually it was called Oily Fans. I think so. Couldn't be sure. It's it's been if it's been more than five minutes, it's too long. So everybody please check out the latest 2D art there from Halligan. So yeah, hell again, uh, I'm sure I'm going to keep on finding more 2D, 2D art stuff sitting around. as Because uh, I only have, well, I'm less likely to find 2D art in the, the next area. Well, it's not going to be the next area, but an area that I'm heading towards. Those will be more like illustrations, I think. Although, who knows, maybe there will be some more. There, there shouldn't really be the old watercolors like I was showing you. I don't think it should be those. Ah, uh, so yeah, they, uh, I could swear that her street used to be called Oily Fans. Well, her only fan stuff. Hopefully she does get back. I've been meaning to just send her a message just to see how she's doing. I'm going to just use this down here at least, since that's uh, super absorbent stuff anyway. That's the bulletin board cork, so what the heck. I think I'm also going to hit my uh, hit the base as well with this while we're at it. So that this has a chance to set a little bit more. So everybody please check out the Discord link there. Because uh, Landras did, uh, what the heck, Cold Hands, right? That's what this guy's called. So Landras did one of these. And uh, Landras, if you wanted to share the, I don't know which, there's like four different wolves, right? Or is there five of them? I'm sure I've got a bunch of those around. We'll have to... I mean, I was tempted to do something like that on this guy here, but then I thought, no, it'll. if I try and paint that on stream, he'll be a little bit tall, and that'll make a little bit of a... Ah, so ghost, okay. Uh, so, yeah, oh, let me get a little bit of the... Uh, yeah, this is a touch of the asphaltum. We're going to get our asphaltum out there. That's what we like to do. So everybody, again, please check out the Discord link there. Well, the two Discord links from, from Landrast, but Ghost and also uh, Cold Hands here. And then also please check out Halligan's 2D art links. Do we get it all on there? I think so. So everybody, again, please uh, give Landrast some kind words there. I think now we finally 
have our paint everywhere. Again, if it spatters a little bit like that, just soapy water, couple seconds, boom, you're done. All clean, right, Grand Oracle? How you doing? So yeah, Grand Oracle, I thought uh, I was completely disoriented. thought today was Saturday. The entire day. So as I was doing stuff, I was doing it based on it being a Saturday and the fact that I have to be up super early tomorrow for the tree removal. I, I did get the printer going again, though. I kind of had it on pause for a couple of days. I made a bunch of build plates today. And the, those are those are print. I just did some more arch villain stuff. Oh, and also some moonlight minis for ReaperCon. So Grand Oracle uh, did the heating heating AC stuff. Did that get resolved? Because I know you came home to that being well not working. I uh, wasn't sure if that's now working. Uh, so Arda Michael. Was it was it in the books or was it? I, I hate to ask it this way. Was it in the books or only in the TV show? Because anything that was in the TV show and not the books will never get made into this. Because this is only based on the books, not the TV show. Like uh, who are the 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 who are the other guys? The the ghost whatevers the 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 white skin guys. The White Walkers or something like that. Yeah, those will never get made for this because it's, uh, yeah, that wasn't in the book, I don't think. Uh, actually, in Grand Oracle, uh, oh, and again, thanks, thanks for last night. I, I did, uh, and thanks for the reminder. Shot you a message there. Uh, yeah, this I'll just hit with our usual black stuff there let's shove you over there and you can see this is already starting to get a little less with the shiny here now oh, that's very cool there danger close uh, so Aaron Bainel yeah <laughs> hilariously enough I thought all day today was Saturday it wasn't until right before stream when I said armored what was that oh I might have to end a little bit early because I gotta get up early Sunday morning he says well so what does that mean? <laughs> because, well, it's uh, not Saturday. So yeah, that was that was me having another senior moment right there. Now pretty much every day is a senior moment. Actually, Grand Oracle, uh, after all the hassles of the trip and, and the build-up to that, and now with everything going on, I think you feel like you're having some senior moments right now, too. You feel like you've aged a little bit over the last three, four months or so. Oh, well, I might as well just go here and just grab some more of these guys here. So, yeah, I, I genuinely thought all day long that today was Saturday. Um, <laughs> well, there's, there's some things that I won't have to do for tomorrow that are now done. The things that I would have done today, those will just have to get done tomorrow. All right, we have wiped off that successfully. Managed not to break any of our basing bits. And again, these are the Make It Epic. Undead dudes. Skelly friends. Skelly friends go. Look at all that. Look at those skelly friends there. I think I printed up at least two build plates worth of those. Hey there, Meat Spawn. Well, I'm glad that the airbrush is all fixed there, Aaron Banal. I know that was uh, that was a little bit of a sad face thing right there. So Hell again says that uh, yeah, life is one senior moment. I think a whole bunch of us are having senior moments left and right these days. Ah, uh, whoops. Uh, oh, well. Well, Grand Oracle, hopefully they just uh, practiced on each other. They just started throwing people into the pool there. And uh, n nothing like uh, actual you know, life-saving training on the job there. That's, that's the best way to learn it. Under duress instead of, uh, instead of in a relaxed, safer environment. 
So yes, lots and lots of senior moments for all of us, I believe. Yeah, this is super complicated too. Look at that. <laughs> Again, I'll I'll be changing over some colors here too. We're just gonna try some different things here. I'm gonna switch that over to maybe uh, this here with the brilliant yellow pale. Maybe a touch of the terra rosa, whatever doing the stuff here. I might have to, here, let me move this up a little bit, maybe, if I can. There we go. Yeah, meet spawn, uh, well, the, the Hobbits is last night. Actually, this is two nights in a row of pretty darn simple pre-glaze. This was basically just Van Dyke Brown. Oh, and by the way, uh, Grand Oracle, I'm using the Mars Black from from Gamlin, not Williamsburg, like we were talking about the, the last couple of streams, especially last night. Yeah, so we're using we're using the Gamlin Mars Black just to give it a little bit of a test, see see what happens. I mean, that's really the best way to test it is uh, to really see okay, what what's it uh, like in this circumstance or this circumstance? Hey there, Arid. So uh, your your revision on that, that's all worked out okay for you? I know there was a, a little bit of a surprise adding to your uh, Easter basket there. But hopefully uh, today is uh, surprise-free. And you'll just be able to do your move and uh, that'll be it. Um Oh oh one of the uh, one of the Shatterpoint inquisitors there. So meat spawn sometimes there's a little bit of floral yellow in there, but the the key is you have to get some of that Indian yellow in there because even adding the floral yellow it's still going to be kind of peachy. So the Indian yellow that's what keeps it from getting too too peachy. The the uh the other yellow will help a little bit, the floral yellow, but definitely not not from keeping it... Uh, I mean, it'll just kind of go straight to peachy without that. Uh, Halligan, that happened with a couple of other folks where uh, there was I was trying to block genuine things that were trash, and of course somehow it blocked like the people that I talked to all the time. Right, and they couldn't understand why I wasn't getting any of their messages. Now, even, I think, Kathy's sister got blocked. Now, of course, we've been getting so many trash calls. And, of course, I don't really use the phone. I, I just type messages. Don't really use it like a, most folks typically use a phone. Actually talk on the phone. That's usually not what I'm doing. So, again, just to... Throw in whatever here. We can also uh, come back in. Remember with pin line washes. Uh, by the way, this is 20 minutes in. Uh, so yeah, meat spawn. That's uh, that is the Indian yellow. That's really important for that. And then two uh, also meat spawn timing. Well, just like comedy, timing is everything. Yes, you want to be able to uh, give that paint enough time to set. That's why you kind of do a little bit in your object source lighting areas. Then you kind of move somewhere else. Then maybe you can swing back around after a bit. Oh, look at this. Here's some Indian yellow. See how that already, look at how it just, see how strong that is? That's a little bit of a dry brushy thing. And look at how strong the tint is on that. So that I wanted to do this meat spawn just to show you how powerful that Indian yellow is and that really should get you away from your uh, creamsicle there. That's not code for anything. Yeah, maybe let's go a little bit there, maybe a little bit on our skelly friends down here. 
Oh, the radiant. Yellow some of this here. Because I'm looking at that. You know what? I need to get some. We'll do maybe a little of a indigo. Maybe even a little bit of indigo. Uh, what should I call it there? Yeah, pin line wash, possibly. Okay, I'm just trying to create some different colors here. Doing this fast. You know, I'm gonna get over to my reference. It'll show me that a little bit uh, bigger. There we go. Just trying to get a little bit of color in some areas here. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, meat spawn that works out. Hopefully, it does. And again, everybody, please give Arity Ken Wife a follow. Arid, I know you're super busy with the move, but if you wanted to post your uh, your Pinstagram, as we like to say, so that people can give you a follow, and then when you start streaming at the new digs again, hopefully this week. Uh, so, Dorkta, I, I have not heard of those before. That is the first time I've ever heard of them. So that's going to be a negatory on trying those paints. Now, somebody else in the chat has, and, and you want to proffer uh, your observation of what, they, what they're like, that would be very helpful. More data, more better, right? Let me get that. There we go. I'm just going to work that in a little more. Look at that. That's a little bit of our uh, radiant blue in there. Everybody, please check out the link there by by Arid, and please give Arid a follow if you could. Uh, so don't that that's uh, that's interesting to know. Mostly, uh, well, because I. When we're talking about the people that are gluing themselves to oil paintings, and you try and get them to understand that the oil is actually not uh, something that comes from dinosaurs, but something that comes from, well, plants. That's another one that I can say, because uh, there's the walnut oil, right? Safflower oil, linseed oil. But uh, now we can add poppy seed oil, thanks to uh, drug tech. So yeah, drug tech, I'm going to... Thanks for the info. I will certainly and what's that called? Blocks. I'll I'll tell people. I say, hey, look, there's a, there's a and it's out of Belgium, right? Uh, drug tank. Yeah, out of Belgium. Hopefully, that's not also chocolate. A uh, little bit of the fast, but ooh, there's a whole bunch of thinner that worked its way into that. So I'm gonna get into something else here. Maybe you know, what? I'm just gonna get. All that out of the brush with a paper towel here. Like that. There. Try this. So again, maybe we'll do this. The brilliant yellow pale. And the radiant blue. Let's hit this guy. here. Yeah. Also, I guess he has a glowing blue eyes. Don't know what the deal is behind that. Uh, so actually, Ar Arda Michael, how are you doing on your? Oh, well, I know you got your Muma kill and your and just in general, you've got uh, your Harad army. Hopefully, that you've been able to do at least a little bit on that, even though you're kind of been distracted with the other stuff. Nah, uh, I think now. What am I printing out? Printing out some Diwali stuff, wargs, Rohan guys. Uh, basically, I think I will be pretty much redoing the Rohan army. Well, at least uh, a lot of the Cav, and I didn't really have much in the way of... Uh, well, I had the five Royal Guard, but I needed some more, so I printed out more of those as well. Alright, so he's... Okay, that's... Uh, because the, the one picture I'm seeing, he's a bit lighter. And then the other ones, uh, obviously, they they got them all kind of dark. But I think he's uh, supposed to be, well, not quite a white walker or whatever. 
but I would I would imagine maybe a little bit later with the fur color or something like that. Ah, so build that. Actually, that's one of the things I'm printing there, Art of Michael, is wargs. Uh, the Diwali warg riders. They should be different from the, the other ones. There would be painted up a couple of them on stream. I thought some of those warg riders, I could use that for maybe another little comparis uh, comparison on some black maybe with also some uh, some Van Dyke browns yeah drug tech uh, that that sounds a bit like the safflower oil but again Grand Oracle sorry that you have to deal with all the extra hassles there after the exhaustion of the trip I mean at least that went kind of the way uh, you're hoping uh, it seems like uh, the, the things that were hoped to be achieved were achieved. Mm. Ah, that's cool there, Arta Michael. Yeah, I actually have a whole bunch of... Well, I also have... I think, is this Suleiman here? No, that's the... Uh, the th this is the Golden King, right? Uh, of Abrakan. Yeah, I think I've... I, well, and two, I believe you have to, the two bears, they're on their own little 25 mil bases. You can't just put them on a oval base, which would make way more sense. You actually have to have the two idiots mounted on round bases, which just is, is silly, but that's, I think, how you have to do it. Well, at least, at least to be fully within uh, the rules, I guess. That's all right. So uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, Twenty-nine minutes plus. Remember, we've been been working on this too. And I'm just gonna chuck some stuff onto here while I'm thinking about it. Here, we'll be doing uh, our usual. Armored Wolf Crushed Glass Snow. And Armored Wolf has uh, just been producing some more of that. So again, uh, Armored Wolf Crushed Glass Snow. Nothing replicates nature better than nature. And that Crushed Glass Snow is uh, it's about the next best thing to real snow. It's uh, really amazing stuff. Again, okay, nothing uh, fancy here right now. We'll be coming back doing more things with it, but for right now, I'm just looking to see, okay, where's, where's some of our lighter values going to be? All right, we're not going to go bonkers with the snow here, because I don't want to cover up all the, the skelly friends, of course. But I'm certainly not going to go nuts up painting this part, which will mostly just be covered with said snow. All right, we'll set you off to the side. We'll grab you again. We'll look at all that darker color on the brush. Now, let me see if I can. This may be... Where's my indigo? There you are. So indigo and the radiant. Let me see if... That does give it a little bit of a blue tint, but I want it a little darker, a little more of the indigo, maybe, here. Something like that, perhaps. And I'll continue this way. Maybe slap a little bit of that here. So yeah, we're starting to tint some of our shadow areas here away from just the Van Dyke Brown now. And give it that little kick of that blue, kind of a dirty bluish gray. Because reasons. Now, so Arid, hopefully no new surprises today. 
Now, I'm sure it's busy and crazy, and you'll be just sort of living off of boxes, maybe, or sleeping on boxes, or sitting on boxes for maybe a day or two as everything gets all settled in. Again, did this junky old brush dry brushing in some of this uh, more bluish color here. And uh, in these uh, shadow areas, especially there. Guess what? We can go lighter on his fur. We'll be doing that too. Mostly bright yellow pale, I gotta say. A whole lot of that. Alright. What about that down there too? Yeah, so now we got ourselves a nice little bit of blend. I can also uh, zoom in maybe a little bit closer here so people can see that. There we go. Maybe even a little bit more of that indigo. Which, oddly enough, sort of ends up looking a little bit on the lighter side. Now, that's full tom here. So we get some separation between that and the fur. A little bit of temperature change like that. Oh, now this should be interesting. Uh, well, look at this uh, Grand Oracle. That's uh, <laughs> it's Egyptian Violet and, and the Gamlin Mars Black. That should be an interesting dark for sure. A little different. Certainly a warmer dark. Um, uh, all right, I'll throw a little bit of thinner in on that, and we'll just get some of these right now, because we know we want those a little bit darker than all the fur around it. I'm just going to hit this like so, just as a bit of a reminder here. I was almost tempted to throw a little bit of the fluorescent blue out here. I think we won't bother with that. Actually, you know what? I'll let his snoot get a little bit darker here. There we are. Now, well, we haven't. Uh, we won't be consulting our usual oracle of the of the flashlight. Because the only real source light there is going to be right literally around the eyes. And 36 minutes ago, this had no paint on it. Plus the, the base. Remember, we're also working on the base too. His little movement tray thing that goes with him. Let me grab some of this. It's the Terra Rosa here. Again, a little bit of change there. Oh, yeah, now I'm starting to feel the multiple uh, colors happen in there. That's what I was hoping for. That's what I want to do all across this thing is have a whole bunch of uh, kind of changey colors going on. I might not this too. A little bit of Terra Rosa in there. A 
let's see here, let me hit the uh, boots a little more with that. Now again, I'm just going to well, take some kind of a sponge here, whatever, just to get some of the paint off of this brush here. Terra Frosa. Some of our radiant yellow. And let's do a little bit more semi-dry brushy stuff here, but obviously a little bit tighter now. We've got ourselves a much smaller de facto filbert brush right here. Now, hell again, don't blink, right? Don't, whatever you do, don't blink. Where did you go? It's easy for you to say. The idiot sculpted me with no eyelids so I can't blink. I'm just like this all the time. Kind of hard to sleep when you can't blink. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that's never, ever, ever going to get old, I don't think. Well, not for me, anyway. Which is good. Of course, there was lots and lots of hijinks last night with all of our little hobbit friends. There were hobbits galore. And uh, they were very cheeky. They were very cheeky little hobbitses indeed. So you can check out last night's stream. We'll certainly be making a highlight out of that. There was uh, lots of hijinks going on. Uh, I'm going to guess get all yeah, here a little bit more of my... Ooh, that might be too much of the... Now, yeah, let's see. It's a little bit of a real yellow pale there. Don't want these leathers to get too late. Also, too, it's gonna it's gonna be time here very soon to move on to something else. We've been hitting that same area a lot. So I think we need to start shifting to something else. Like maybe we'll go back to the uh, to his fur. Start doing some stuff with that. Cause reasons Let's do this smidge of smattering a light over there. Yeah, and big thing is m as many little different colors, changes, and such as we can create. Just to make this thing a little more interesting, otherwise it could be uh, kind of boring. If it's all just either grays or browns or whatever. Where's a Ah, there's a blending brush here. I knew there had to be one around somewhere. Good uh, there. All right, now let, let's. Uh, yeah, let's not keep messing around with this. Let's start doing some stuff, maybe, with that. Fur. I might even just use this brush, at least at the start of it here. So again, just going to squeegee some of that out of it so we don't have a whole bunch of, of our liquid on this brush. So there we go. Really yellow pale. I will. Uh, might have to get some more of my radiant blue out here, though. Now, let me see what we can do over here in that. Yeah, there we go. See, that's already much lighter and that can now start to mix with some of those cooler blues that we put in there there look at that so we didn't mix any colors we're just putting straight up colors over the top and they're mixing together creating other colors Instead of us having to work like crazy, hashtag less work. 
<laughs> Less is more and more is way too much, and not just paint, adds work. Yeah, think of it like that. There can be too much work as well. So I believe that was done in the winter of 2020. So yeah, I, I would say uh, it's getting to be almost three years old. Much like the hype train cookie. And uh, let's just put it this way. You don't want to get hit with one of these things. It will knock you unconscious. And uh, I'm hoping to do some form of uh, cookie decorating this holiday season. I don't think it'll be gingerbread. I would much prefer the nutmeg log recipe because I can actually really sculpt that stuff. Whereas the gingerbread just kind of goes... Pfft, and it, it looks vaguely like something. Whereas when you use the, the nutmeg log recipe, I mean, it just looks... If you cut out a shape, it just looks like that shape. Yeah, Aaron Mato, the you get hit with that cookie, that's going to leave a mark, as they say. Yes, indeed. It is somebody who in Cub Scouts got hit in the forehead at close range with an... And a, a Chips Ahoy cookie at very close range on, on end. That left a bruise that was there for about a month. So these cookies right there are liable to uh, cause some cranial injuries. Which does make them ideal as uh, Christmas ornaments, though. They'll essentially be in unbreakable Christmas ornaments. They'll last longer than your tree. Uh, yeah, let me get some more of my light on the legs here, too. Again, it happens mighty fast here. Uh, the yeah, ear beetle, uh, Usually you can actually watch the cookie decorating episodes. They're still uh, they're saved as highlights. We did, I did two of them. I think I did one on Christmas Eve, and then one uh, later on. Of course, also we've been painting our ornaments. We'll, we'll be doing that again too. We have, I need done tons of ornaments because I actually don't even have any here for myself. So yeah, check out the Christmas ornament painting. I think I'm going to start doing that uh, around the Thanksgiving time there so that maybe I will have enough for, uh, for a tree. What are we doing here? We're going to throw that this away here. Also there. I'm going to get a little bit of my light down there too. Now these these crazy little rings, oh my gosh, they they really get beat up by mold lines, that's for sure. Again, if you're going to try and take the mold lines off of these, it's going to it's going to be involved. Yeah, I don't think I have any of the uh, cookies as uh, as scenes here, but I know I have the ornaments somewhere. Where's my ornaments here? Ornaments, ornaments, Galadriel. They're around here somewhere. Nope, don't see them there. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. They must be around here somewhere because we showed them last night. There we go. Now yeah, there's our there's our Palantir ornament and our Mars ornament. Uh, we did Earth. We did the Moon. We always uh, paint the Earth on New Year's Eve, of course. 
and we did Jupiter. Remember, we did Saturn. That one was uh, that was very tricky. I'll have to say, doing that Saturn. That bridle needs to be a little lighter. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back in. I think with some darks. Now that we've done a whole bunch of stuff with lighter tones. We're going to come back now with some darks. Reinforce some edges, I think. More here. Now I also want to do something with the, with the blue around there. Let me see if I can just grab maybe you. And the Prussian blue and the radiant turquoise or turquoise, we like to say. Just shove that over here. Do it again. There. A little more of the Prussian blue around the outside. Darken that up. Now let's do something to make that is uh, a little bit now later. Try this. Start it off with the radiant. Okay, a little bit of our fast mat white in there. Actually, Grand Oracle, I've got to get me a tube of the Fast Matte White. Running uh, really, really low on that, that's for sure. Alrighty. If I feel like I have to, I could try to darken that blue around the edges, but I think we're not doing too bad here. Nah, that, that's no good. We'll just change that back to what it was. Other one. Still can go lighter than this, too, remember. Also, the uh, hand very far away, right from that metal ferrule of the brush. Far away as we can be. Yeah, now no, it's sad thing. I'll just try and go uh, with the fast mat white. In a few places, we're going to break this down. At least this time I sort of remembered to keep the thinner on it. That sort of helps again break it down. Let me see if I can get that little chunk of paint. Oh, that's just going to be in there. Uh, so Halligan, haven't had a chance to try the radiant white yet. Now that's something, uh, I've been trying to print out some things that I thought might work well for, for a, a, a demo on that. Because it's something I would like to compare to, well, at least, at least the fast mat, the quick dry, I guess regular titanium. And I, uh, actually it was, well, there's some Song of Ice and Fire stuff that I could use also. It would really be more about comparing the drying times than anything else. I mean, yeah, there'll, there'll be probably some little difference in opacity and stuff, but it'll, I think that the drying times will be the big thing. Let me see if I can lighten up his muzzle here like that maybe a bit yeah not that far down not that far down his muzzle we'll stop right about here maybe Now, Halligan, have you had a chance to, to give that a try? I know a few people have. Some people uh, 
do like it, that's for sure. More than one person has said, oh yeah, I like that. I can't remember which person has tried it and which persons haven't. Yeah, well, that was, clearly it was a struggle for me just to remember that today was Friday and not Saturday. So, is it any wonder? More of that light this way. Maybe a little more over here. Maybe even a little bit to sneaking down there too. I'll just let that kind of, well again, dry brush it onto his nose, let it mix there. Ah, fine, I'll just uh, hit these guys with some of the light here. Just also now some there. Now, I didn't want this to look too, well, nergly, I guess. Didn't want that. So uh, that's why I want to get at least some of the, the blue in there, but not too much of, uh, like, say, some of the greens, some of the yellows and such. Is everybody uh, check out the, the Hobbit stream from last night? Again, there was uh, all kinds of shenanigans happening last night. How much? Uh, I'm gonna let that light work its way up a little bit further here. Then I gotta always tip a blending brush to that and tone that down a little. But it, uh, I think that does make a difference there. Now we don't need radiant green on the brush. Looking for the, the fast matte white. If anything, maybe a little of the brilliant yellow pale. Also, two uh, a mold line runneth through it, so we have to be thinking about those two. It's going to go this way. I uh, get yeah, that it's even though it's just the white on the brush, that's not really how this is looking as it gets painted. Why? Because well it mixes with everything that's already on there. The pre glaze, some of that secondary color that we added there too. Alright, I'm gonna get another little area for my fast mat here, break some of that down. Get some of that here. Where's a blending brush? I'll just use this as a blending brush. Even though there might be a little bit of paint down there. Here, we'll just take that and smooth that right down. So again, this is from Song of Ice and Fire. These are one-piece plastic miniatures. Well, they're, they are cast in multiple pieces, but by the time you get them, they've actually been glued together. Filing the mold lines can be tricky, and I actually have some videos on that, especially as part of the Patreon page. You'll need sanding sticks, really, to get rid of those. You want some that are more coarse, some that are uh, much more fine grit. They are pretty much indestructible. They don't have, uh, it's not like bones, old bones plastic with the droopy weapons or something like that, because those 
anything that well, even like these horns there or the sword that's made out of a resilient kind of more standard type plastic hey there flying pin how you doing nice to see ya made a little more light on that sword there we go so here too uh, again none of this here None of this here is uh, rocket science. None of this is even paper airplane side. This uh, side, we're just trying to work some of our lights in here, but definitely have a little bit of difference in some of the color, right? That's why we got the blue in there. Now we got a little bit of our our, our yellow in this. That's the brilliant yellow pale. Now before I do too much on these uh, horns here. I'm going to use that so I can just stick my hand on that for now. Uh, so Laminas, I've been trying to get that that uh, simple gray 2.0 or whatever version 2. I'm convinced that uh, it has definitely some interesting properties to it. And I'm, I'm also very much convinced that it comes off the supports a lot easier than all of the other simple resins. Why it's thirty-seven dollars on the Soraya site and twenty-seven dollars on Amazon, I don't quite understand why. But I think I'm just going to have to keep on getting containers of that on Amazon until, well, that price I guess just kind of equalizes. Uh, no idea, Lamines. I just I went to buy it on Amazon, and the only one that was there was the gray 2.0. Then I looked at, no, actually, first I saw it on the Soraya side. What the heck is Gray 2.0? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Don't know what's in it. All I know is that now that I've used it, it just, uh, it's easier to get the prints off, among other things. The, the container is also different. Well, the bottle is the same, but instead of coming in the box with the foam around it, it's just a box. So at first I thought I was getting a smaller container. I went, what the heck is going on here? It's supposed to be a liter. No, I just, uh, instead of having all that extra stupid packaging around it with the foam, it's just the bottle in the cardboard with a little kind of a thing that holds it in place. All right. Now, this is certainly, well, one hour. One hour, four minutes. <laughs> now, I'm going to get me some of my indigo-ish type grays in here on him, because we already have plenty of the, uh, might also use some of the pearly black. That's our, that's our dark green, not black. We did use... For our pre-glaze, the Mars Black from Gamlin this time, not from Williamsburg. So not only is that kind of changing, switching that color a little bit to something, again, more of a bluish gray, but it's also uh, kind of softening up a few weird little dry brushy things. Now, I mean, here's a weird mold line. I mean, it's literally going through his cloak right there. Yeah, it's not meant to be a... I could actually, I guess, treat that as some kind of a stitching seam or something. But because these are, they try to get these to be one-piece miniatures, there's going to be mold lines in bizarre places. Ah, okay. Well, that's not a problem around here. <laughs> Maybe uh, maybe that's why it uh, it does look a little bit different too. Uh, the the best way I can describe it is it looks much flatter, it looks more matte, whereas the the other gray resin I don't want to say it's shiny, but it definitely is not quite as matte as this stuff when it when it's uh, all when it's dry and not even cured. So that's very curious.
Again, I'm trying to vary the color here. We're probably going to get, again, some of our green onto this, but right now I'm putting some of this bluish gray here. Thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting a link to the Patreon page. I've got, uh, I think I would put up, oh, there, tomorrow, right, yeah, tomorrow I'll be putting up the, the ninth video for the month. Uh, I try to have ten of them each month. Uh, so, yeah, well, Luminous, uh, they, they basically, well, they call all of their simple resins now water washable. They didn't used to. They did not used to call them water washable, but uh, about, I want to say, four-ish months ago, that's when I started to see them being called water washable, which was confusing as heck for me. Because I never thought of them as uh, water washable. Now, I'm going to take this blending brush here. So yeah, Lamanessa, <laughs> I've had, uh, I had one that was soaking in, oh, the rubbing alcohol, Lamanessa, yeah, that, it was weird, it was kind of semi-dissolved, and then it really, like you were saying, it, it cracked like crazy there. Throw a little bit more of that lighter gray right there. So yeah, it was one of those smaller pieces that just kind of got lost in the shuffle, and then I found it and it was sitting in the sitting in my vat of the rubbing alcohol, and that was it was sort of solid when it came out of there, sort of like uh, those uh, wooden ships when they drag those up from the bottom of the sea. And they just start to kind of disintegrate, like you said. I try not to have that happen too often. So again, I just uh, always got in the habit of using a little bit of the rubbing alcohol. This is 70%. I use it for cleaning my oil painting stuff anyways, so it's around. I use it for getting glue out of brushes. So since it's around, I, I use it for my resin. It's not the nasty 90% stuff or anything like that. Glad I don't have to deal with that anymore. Yeah, just trying to find my some of my mid-tones here, not really the hot, bright highlights yet because we still have to come back in with some of those uh, heftier darks. Let me see it. Eh, what the heck, I'm going to throw this over here, we'll grab our blending brush and we'll just uh, do that. This way. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think I'll... I was tempted to put a little bit more up there, but I better uh, better use my dark for that. When it doubt, make things darker. You know what? Here, let me just chuck a little bit more of my lighter stuff here on some of these little skelly friends. Take our blending brush to it here. Uh, so Elite, uh, yes, uh, I, I'm guessing that tomorrow's stream, the Saturday stream, should have lots and lots and lots of jocularity because of uh, some hobbitses. They will be very tricksy, indeed, doing hobbit stuff.
Yeah, Grand Oracle, uh, what would you say? They drank their own Kool-Aid and put on the robe and uh, that killed them. Blending brush again. I mean, when you look at basically any one of my my usual, I almost said Song of Ice and Fire, but my usual Lord of the Rings 3D or digital sculptors there, they, I mean, even their stuff wouldn't be that uh, quite so slapdash. So yeah, Elite, I've got uh, I think three of them that are all uh, all prepped and ready to go. No, no, sorry, about six of them, maybe seven. Again, the stream can't go too late tomorrow because uh, Sunday morning is very, very, very early. Early wake-up call. Yeah, and Grand Oracle, did you see, uh, he went, I think it's Dark Knight Miniatures now or something like that, or Black Knight Miniatures, yeah, it's Black Knight Miniatures now, but it was Dark Lord Miniatures, but he finally posted somewhere, I think maybe in a sneaky, different My Mini Factory thing where only patrons could see it. All of the miniatures that, well, I didn't get to download because GW shut him down. So at least now I have those files. Because that was uh, very disappointing there. Uh, I mean, that's kind of why printing goes ever on. It takes the approach that he does. I mean, everything these days is all just going to be designed digitally, so. But you would think that they would, well, again, that's kind of how they treat Lord of the Rings. All right, let me do, I'm going to get a little bit, not just lighter up here, but also uh, all the fur texture, because reasons. There. Like so. And uh, again, by the way, we're just about to hit the two hour mark. Two hours ago. This had no paint on it at all. I'm just saying. Many wondrous things are possible with the oils. Let's check a couple of those lights there. We'll take, a, once again, our blending brush to it here. Uh, so Spark Minis, that was going to be a long birthday stream. I don't know, was it going to be a 24-hour stream? And I, I, I torment and tease people all the time about, yeah, they're going to do a 72-hour stream with no breaks or anything. But I do believe it's going to be a long stream for you. I need to catch a couple little lights up here. we got a whole bunch of dark. Just working around things like the horns. Which now I think I can maybe start to get some more lights back onto these again. Because uh, I'm not going to be sticking my finger on those quite so often, I think. Blending brush. Look at that. I could do a whole bunch of layers there, or I could just do that. Hashtag no layers. Maybe not advisable in winter time outside, but here with the oil paints, highly advisable. And I hit that a little bit more here. Again, take the blending brush to it. And again, see, you got the 
the spatter there from the pre-glaze, if you don't want the paint getting on your hands, that's very simple. We all have the nitro gloves, right, from printing and well, other things. You can always just put those on your hands or about two minutes tops with warm water and dish soap and then it'll all be gone. Now, I'm almost tempted to try and do a little bit of a warm green in some areas here. However, that's going to that's gonna kind of nurgly that up, and I don't think we want to make it more on the nurgle side. So thanks, Armored Wolf, for posting a link to the Patreon page. The uh, completed Army Painting Series 38. That will be going up on the Patreon page most likely tomorrow, either that or Sunday morning. You do that $15 Army Painter Pledge, you are getting every video that I've ever done over the last 10 years. Got to be, if it's not 1,500 hours worth of videos, it's got to be close to it. If you've binged all of your Netflix and everything else, you can check that out. Ah, thank you so much, Al, again. And I try to do new stuff all the time. New materials, new approaches. It's not just, okay, here is the tenth video on how to paint the exact same non-metallic metal. Ah, thank you so much, Grand Oracle. Now, that does, does, that does lead to some mirth and humor as well. Because there's times where I have no idea what to expect. And let's just say sometimes there's surprises. Uh, so, or I'm going to be doing both. Uh, remember I had to 3D print the basing bits for him first. And if you recall, Aura, we wanted to take the... Uh, Oh, what you might call it there, the interference colors, especially for certain parts of the carapace, to do that. So that is uh, that series is coming. Again, I had to be at least be able to print out the bits for it, the basing bits that is. Because uh, we haven't done too much stuff with the interference colors in a while. Although I have some arch villain miniatures that I printed out today that are sort of like these uh, butterflies or dragonflies or something like that. And something tells me those will also be uh, interesting for interference colors. Those I would probably just do on stream. And that one, that's right, we've, uh, the uh, Dark Sword Dragon, we posted the final episode of that the other day. As I add a little more right there, and then take the blending brush to this. Uh, so or I'm hoping to do the, what's, uh, oh yeah, in, in September... Uh, let me see. Yeah, I just uh, got the the Howling Griffins. Those are done. So here, where the heck did they go? Here we go. We just finished off this series right here with the Howling Griffins. That was a challenge. Whew. That was one heck of a challenge. Let me throw uh, a little bit more of my white here. Leg there, a little skelly friend down here. Ah, that'd be fantastic there, Grand Oracle. Mm, 
Uh, and of course, uh, six new dragons arrived, and I might, uh, that's something I might try to do maybe tomorrow. It's just a little bit of an assembly video on those. Like we did with the other ones. So and again, instead of a whole bunch of layers there, I just took that lighter color and I'm just going to spread that around here. That 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 is the easy way. That is definitely the easy way. And the oil paints that we're using here, they're literally just right out of the tube. No weird outgids or mediums or anything like that. I use a very high quality odorless thinner, of which I do not use much. This is it. That it's a water bottle cap. That that's it for the whole night. For cleaning brushes, don't use thinner. That's for thinning paint. This will clean your brushes also of dried acrylic and oils. Not hazardous. No vapor. So whenever folks they express concern about the solvents and smells and everything, I say, well, first of all, if you're using a high quality thinner, there really shouldn't be any smell. And if you're using that tiny amount, also, guess what? Not a whole bunch of smell. And of course, uh, <laughs> yeah, in cheeky Hobbit style, we do our best so that people can never get fully caught up. They they start making some progress. They think, aha, I'm going to get them. And then all of a sudden, a flurry of videos comes out and there's uh, they're thrown back into chaos again. Uh, actually, yeah, Grand Oracle, basically, uh, well, that's why I'm glad there's so many of them. Because, well, instead of, because they don't necessarily have, obviously, for everybody, enough Dark Sword figures to go around. But I thought, well, if somebody got themselves a, a Red Dragon or a Blue Dragon or a White Dragon, maybe that would be okay for, and we talked about this before, right, you know, substituting for a couple of just the regular small figs. Having a nice big old dragon. Which ultimately, if it was going to be three, four Dark Sword miniatures or the dragon, the box wouldn't be all that different in size. See you later there, Hal again. Thanks so much for being here, of course. Uh, so yeah, uh, Grand Oracle, that was my hope, was that people be okay and... Again, instead of like, well, here's three or four dark sword figs. What about what about a big old dragon, or a mid-sized dragon and a figure two or something like that? Some kind of combination thereof. And that's why I was glad that uh, there was more dragons. So now we can pretty much go uh, a dragon per person. Uh, especially if the persons are uh, in the U.S., for sure. Now, let me see if I can right on that top edge, get that a little lighter. Same up here. Yeah. I don't want to do too much on the base, because if I really make that too light... Well, that's going to be troublesome when the snow gets there. We have to factor in. There's going to be the crushed glass snow here. I mean, obviously, the reason I like to send the multiple figs is that that way I make uh, that kind of honeycomb interior in the box. And it's literally like sending several boxes all glued together for extra strength. Give me a little bit of this, well, radiant green, pearling black. 
That's going to go in a couple of places here. Ah, the straps for the sword scabbard. Can you see this here? I'm just going to chuck a little bit of that. Again, that's that lighter grayish green. Not that he's going to be green. It's just, again, it's another little color change there. It definitely does, Grand Oracle. All that, that really is a massive help. Yeah, especially since uh, there's yet another house repair that I'm going to have to do that we were hoping to put off. I mean, it's not a colossal expensive one, but it's kind of a safety thing in a weird way. Have to... Uh, find a type of kitchen flooring that's going to be really easy to put down in no time flat because the flooring that my brother and I put down there 30 some odd years ago well it's uh, it's very easy to trip over that now because some of the pieces have little edges sticking up it was never meant to last that long so this is really we thought we could maybe get 15 decent years out of it maybe 20 Uh, Grand Oracle, I've been in this house long enough to see three kitchen floors. Yeah, the one that Tom and I did was actually the third floor put in the kitchen. When Kathy came down here, she said, why are these doors so, so short? I said, it's because the floors are so tall. Yes, indeed. Been through at least... All of the walls being either painted or having wallpaper or paneling torn down at least twice. Now, we did a new roof in 2018. Yeah, I think it was 2018 we did a new roof. So that is very current. There's been a lot of, actually, I've been, I think I've been through at least three water heaters in this house. Let's get some light. I think that actually is supposed to be sort of like a little bit of armor on his hand there. So, yeah, once you get down to about the third floor... And uh, we also put underlayment on this third one... So that made it even taller. That's going to make my job, that's what's going to make it easier. Is that the underlayment is totally fine. It's just the, the, the tiles, they're old and they're cracking. And we just need to get rid of those. And the, the space is not that big, so the expense shouldn't be too bad. Especially if I just kind of... Again, get something that's not uh, its not going to be anything luxurious, that's for sure. I don't need luxurious, I just need something that's not going to kill me. Now, so Grand Oracle, a little bit of a historical, uh, well, kind of like a little bit of a home archaeology there. Let me see if I can get a little more of my light tone there. Also on this skilly friend too. Now remember we uh, we went in. I might do a little bit more of that. We took the oh I think it was this uh, brush here, something like that, and we put some indigo in there, and a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale. I'll do that. To, let me try some more of that here. Again, that's the indigo, the brilliant yellow pale. Part of this, remember, there's going to be that snow here. And with that crushed glass snow, we want it to be reflecting some of that sky color back up onto our, uh, onto our critter right here.
Hmm, let me... I'm going to take my dark here. And it's uh, mostly just Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of the Mars Black. And again, we're using the Mars Black this time around from, from Gamblin. Uh, so Grand Oracle... Uh, we we won't have quite the that sort of differential here, but I would say it would be at least ten times. And we're just talking about a little bungalow here. Just a uh, typical Chicago style bungalow. Now I, I'm going to darken that down a little bit. Maybe even give him some individual chompers here around his eye I'm kind of tempted to take a little more of my Prussian blue whoops no a little more than that if this uh, doesn't work out I can always change it back but I, I just want to make this a teensy bit darker And that might be it. See, now the eye looks more like it's glowing. Actually, i got to go one level lighter there, maybe. Uh, actually, Grant Oracle, I'll, I'll shoot you some messages. You, you will be absolutely shocked at the similarity of the timelines. I mean, the, you will be absolutely stunned and amazed by that. So, yeah, I'll shoot you a message tomorrow and fill you in on the timeline there. Because uh, you might say, you got to be kidding me. All right, this, there's a weird, crazy edge there. Oh, uh, I'll get some of this. Man, look at that. I just uh, took some of the same Indian yellow stuff that we put on the horns, which uh, we'll be getting up to the horns in, uh, in a jiffy here. Uh, so, Ryan, yep, uh, I'll be using that. Uh, I mean, I still have some... Uh, I don't know if I have any of the secret weapon heavy... No, sorry. Realistic water, whatever that was. The stuff that they used for the snow. Uh, I just actually got a new container of that, Ryan, because the other one... I mean, you know how I say every time I use it, I say, well, kind of get a smaller container and just use it up faster instead of having a big one that's around forever. Because, yeah, that bigger container, the stuff that's in there is just really hard to use. Hey there, Bithron. Everybody, please check out Bithron's link there. So, Bithron, your, uh, well, your conquest stuff looking very, very, very good. Just so glad that you've been enjoying that. Well, also the bolt action, too. So painting tentacle, the the ones that, well, there's the printing goes ever on. That was actually the very first one. There's Diwali. Then there's Kerr's look. Uh, then there's Medbury miniatures. Now he also does historicals. He also does historicals. Then you've got, well, some of the newer ones like dandelions in Middle Earth. And that's another nice one. I'll be trying to paint up some of their stuff too. I I have some of it printed. I might actually try and reprint some of it there. Ah, well, Bithron, hopefully... Well, I'm hoping that your plastic glue was very strong. And there was not a whole lot of breakage. I know that's probably too much to hope for. I'm trying to think of it. Well, the, there was one Dark Lord miniatures, but they kind of don't exist anymore. And then, of course, every so often you'll have other companies that do not Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings minis. Uh, actually, Monster Mini Mayhem does that, or Mini Monster Mayhem does that. Uh, I think even Titan Forge has every so often kind of done some figures that, uh, shall we say, look very Lord of the Rings-like. Uh, RNS Studio, uh, Clay Cyanide. Those tend to just be things like the Fellowship or your most common named characters and not really, well, armies. 
Oh, well, that's not uh, that's not as bad as I was thinking you were going to say there, Bithron. So so glad it's not too horrible. And hopefully that's something that's not too much of a hassle to fix. As uh, now we're going to get to the horns on this guy. Again, it's uh, not even two and a half hours in. And when we start, and we're also too, we've been working on the movement tray as well, not just the miniature. So, yep, Grand Oracle mentioned R in a studio, clay cyanide. Again, even Titan Forge every so often. Uh, and then uh, Mini Monster Mayhem. They did a Balrog. They did all those really nifty trolls that were basically Lord of the Rings trolls. Ah, there we go. Now we're starting to get a little bit of the texture now into those. So they've they've got your Fellowship. They've got a Saruman. And we did a bunch of those... Uh, I think they also did a Sauron, yes. And I think they, they have a Balrog... He's, again, very, very stylized. Not all that big. Oh, gosh. I forget what they call him, Grand Oracle. Oh, geez. Is it uh, Against the Shadows, I think? That's the kind of the title of those particular releases. I think there's... It goes up to Against the Shadows Volume 4, but there's really only three releases. Something weird like that. Like it says volume four, but there's not four actual volumes. Oh, and there you go. See, see, Grand Oracle, great mimes think alike. If mimes do that much thinking. Now I'm going to get some on the top there. Yeah, let's do that. Now, see, it's it's very confusing, right, uh, Grand Oracle, to say the least. Now, again, you're just trying to uh, tuck in some texture there. Well, let me do the same over here too. which uh, the mold lines weren't too bad on this. And remember, the Song of Ice and Fire minis, they're, they're one piece. Yes, indeed, mimes are terrible things to waste. Don't want to waste those mimes. Uh, here, let's do a... Uh, maybe not not on that. I'm going to let that be darker there. We don't have to highlight every bit of texture all along the entire length of his antlers here. Now that is a little bit too much right there, so we'll get rid of some of that. Uh, oh, actually, Grand Oracle, that's what I forgot to snag. I'm going to have to get me some of that uh, tomorrow. Well, let's put it this way. The medicine cabinet is looking real, real uh, shallow right now. Yeah, it's looking a wee bit on the empty side. So we need to refill that uh, medicine cabinet just a bit tomorrow. It's a little bit shy of some... Some of our favorite medicines, which again we don't enjoy. They're only for the good of the stream. I will take some of this still and see if I can't get that right over here. Also They really like having these wrappings here. I swear it's almost like the the wrappings of the new version of buckles. Remember, everything had buckles. 
because uh, ZBrush must have had, literally we called it the buckle brush. And that's all it did was just do endless buckles. I, that's what we, we call oh, buckle golems. That's what we would call them. They were miniatures with a thousand buckles on them. It would take these these people would die, or they would uh, they would certainly get caught or whatever, because it would take them three years to do up all those buckles just to be able to walk around. I mean, a few okay. Forty dozen of them on a 28 mil fig might be a little more excessive than people think. I'm just saying. All right, I think we've gotten that heel good enough. To cloak here. Let me see if I can't go back at that with indigo. And again, that's the gambling Mars black. It's going to be more of a, a dry brushy type thing, even though it's a tiny little brush. It's going to be more of a dry brush style application. Now remember, even if all this was dry, that doesn't stop you from doing all kinds of nifty things like, well, wet blending. It would just be blending the wet paint over the dry paint. But basically what you're going to do is just spread it out. It's not blending into the dry coat underneath but you're just spreading it out now where's my terra rosa here blending brush again one more bit of where did that brush go yeah we use this maybe brilliant yellow pale a little bit thinner in there, not too much. Definitely not too much, and minus that big old piece of fuzz on there. That's good there. We do have our lighter fletching. This side over here. Maybe a oh gee whiz, yeah, we can actually get a lot lighter on his forehead there. Uh, Grand Oracle, what does that fall under the uh, nothing, uh, let's see, nothing replicates nature better than nature. So you use a piece of fuzz to represent fur. Just to, to try and be as uh, texturally accurate as possible using actual fuzz. Here's my little blending brush here. Mm, that's got some, got some thin right here. We're just gonna try and get rid of some of that. Thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting the link to the GoFundMe campaign for all the folks that have helped with that. That is much appreciated. It's uh, made a big, big difference. Again, we were talking about all these different house repair things, stuff that I could not do when things were really, really, really bad there. But now something's got to happen with those. And that's what we're trying to do now. Let me see if I can't. Can you even see what I... <laughs> Unfortunately, it's kind of blocked by the antlers. Maybe if I try it from this angle, you'll be able to see it a little better. Ah, so yeah, Grand Oracle, There's uh, there was a whole bunch of that when we had the dog and the cat here, and the dog... Poof, it was almost like pig pen. You could just see the fur floating up off of him. Uh, 
Um, so that was that season six of that elite. I have a feeling it was season six. Oh yeah, let's get some lights over here. Again, it's uh, I just. Uh, keep forgetting that I haven't actually seen any TV show of any kind since April. Apparently the Babylon 5, there's an animated Babylon 5 show that's on Amazon. I'll have to, who knows, maybe, well, that, maybe I'll be able to see that since it's on Amazon. Anything on Netflix or anything like that? Or the D Disney thing, that's uh, out of my reach. Don't have those. Ah, uh, yeah, Elite. Uh, I, I find it very fascinating that in season six, with the six episodes, they almost told more story in six episodes than like the previous 14 or 18 or whatever it was of the two seasons, especially season five. And even season four, those uh, those didn't move very rapidly. Uh, so yeah, Bithra, at least that's what uh, was, someone just told me yesterday or the day before. That it's on, I guess, on Amazon. Uh, again, I, I won't know for sure until I actually find it on there myself. Touch more light here. Uh, again, doing what I can where there's some pretty extreme uh, mold lines and such. All you could do, you use uh, the rougher sanding stick, you try and get most of it, and then you have to uh, use a much finer grit sandpaper, uh, sanding stick to get the rest of it. So yeah, I had a few uh, favorite characters obviously well the pilot was always a fave and the lady that has the uh, the voice that sounds like she smoked cigarettes for her entire life who was uh, was the UN prime minister or whatever or UN president I guess I should say I think that's what it was Uh, yeah, you know what? Let me see if I can here get a little bit of almost a uh, fur texture with that really, really, really light color. Now we did it on that side. Yeah, we can lighten up this side too. Uh, yeah, I lead definitely very much with the uh, strategery, but also everybody kind of knows that she's going to do that charm offensive thing and then probably try to kill you later on. Let me see if I can't... Ah, there we go. Just caught a little bit of light in there. Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's another one there, Elite, for sure. Haven't... Uh, oh, yeah, see, I can... Now that I'm not going to be sticking my finger on the edges of these anymore, I can really... Uh, Get some of the lightest light on those. And I can't do too much on these rocks. That the lighter I make those, or that the dingier our snow is going to look. We don't want dingy snow, or yellow snow for that matter. Trying to get a little, some kind of light there on that hoof. Mostly just a brilliant yellow pale at this point. All right. 
Now we'll set uh, him aside just so that I can do a little bit now on this. Skelly friends mostly. Probably doing a, do a little bit of rust effects too, maybe. Now, my, my favorite thing was that if, if you're out in these environments, you cease to basically be, well, a regular human anymore. You're now a different species because your body maybe can't take gravity, can't take light. Like how you can spot a Martian walking around on Earth a mile away because of how they walk, because they're not used to the gravity. And we'll tap, 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 spread that around. Get lots of those skelly friends. We're going to come back and hit some of this with maybe some of our Terra Rosa or S. Fultum, maybe. Right now, mostly just a brilliant yellow pale. Now on the the banner things over there, eh, nothing, nothing too crazy there. Maybe just uh, something that's got a little bit of red or something like that to it. Again, we just plop that on there. Where's my blending brush here? We push that around. Same here. Blending brush means we don't have to mix a whole bunch of layers of paint. I mean, we're just little, little skelly friends here, right? We don't want to have to spend an hour on each one of these little skeletons, but we do want to have some blending on them, of course. A little bit more of our tap, tap, tap there. We got Skelly Friend with the sword sticking through him here. Let's do this guy. It's a whole lot easier doing this than it was uh, taking some of the, the GW. I think that the vampire counts bits, right? Taking the head and uh, trying to take a torso and then fooling around trying to position those on a base. These are a whole lot easier to do that with. Because they're already in that position. Some ribs on him. And like I said, uh, we could always come back into that with uh, something like their S. Fultum, do, do a little bit of a pin line wash, a semi glaze type of a thing. So you've got, a, got that sword sticking out of them there. So not too shabby that it's uh, not just the miniature, but also the little movement tray here. Again, all in. So far, less than three hours. I'm just going to get back to my reference here real quick if I can. Yeah. So like a, maybe a, like a, a Lannister-ish type thing. So some kind of Lannister red. I mean, this is uh, Resurrection Queen, so they would probably be running into Lannisters quite often. Some teeth on our skelly friends here. Again, I just chuck that lighter color on there. Take this blending brush, push that around. My Tomb King's army, wow. That would have went a little bit faster if I could have just done that. As in, a whole lot faster. I 
Yeah, basically everything would have went a lot faster if I had the oils back in the day. Well, let's see, it was 2014, well, 2013, 2014 when I was doing the Tomb Kings. Yeah, look where my hand is on this brush, right? There's no, how am I supposed to get all the way over there if I got this death grip on the brush? I can't. Can't do that at all. So very important to yeah, not have the death grip on the brush. No, not on that side. That'd be on this side. Blending brush. I said I might take a little bit of my uh, Prussian blue to that. Give it a little bit of uh, sky tone. We can. No, after I get my skelly, skelly pile over there uh, with some of this fast matte white, then we'll. Do a little bit of that, then we'll get the red on the uh, our little banner bits right there. Again, these are 3D printed from Make It Epic Basing. They have hundreds and hundreds of bits, which I still keep forgetting to mirror to make different bits. Yes, if there's 10 files, if you mirror them, you will get. 20 unique files. I just keep forgetting to do that. And actually, well, I mean, S, have you, uh, you know what? Have you ever mirrored some miniatures? Well, I don't really do them to have armies per se, so I guess you haven't really mirrored miniatures at all. I certainly haven't tried that yet. I, I would be curious to see if that would make any difference. If I did that, say, with, I don't know, a Diwali, whatever, and I reverse them, or mirror them, would I basically have something that looks significantly different, or would it just look weird? This is my, that's not the blending brush. This is not the blending brush you're after. Again, 3D printed basing bits are my friend. Okay. Let me see if I can't just really quick get some of my Prussian blue here. Uh, so that Oryx land dress, uh, I mean, obviously it's going to look like it's just a little bit kind of in the family there. But, uh, ooh, land dress, did you see that? What does Titan Forge have coming for? And I meant to ask you if you, if you saw that. Titan Forge is doing, well, they got the uh, Chaos Doors right now, but their oh, September release is, ah, oh well. Oh, it's Bretonians. Yeah, Lantrast, uh, I thought you would find that hilarious. Uh, guess who wants to print those? That would be this guy. Uh, for an army painting series, of course. So yeah, Titan Forge doing Bretonians. Which will be uh, absolutely fabulous, just like the TV show. All right, we'll throw in. Okay, that's got a little bit more of the yellow in it. And I'm thinking that's another one with a individual heraldry. Right, we're not going to be doing the same same livery on every horse and, and uh, knight and such like that. We'll be doing different ones on each. Yeah, mixing up a little bit of something there. Now, let me use... I'll just... Well, oh, there's no... It would be easier to paint red if I actually had some of my naphthol red. Just use the naphthol here. Because I know that uh, Highland Miniatures has the uh, 
has those uh, and obviously I would certainly print those I I have Highland miniatures so here I'm just gonna hit this and we'll maybe throw a little bit of gold ish something on there again to give it that Lannister ish look this is literally just a quick bit of dry brush here so that the pre-glaze mixes along with it kind of darkens it up even a little bit more and then we're going to leave that for a second I'm going to get me some of the asphaltum over here maybe even a little bit of the Van Dyke brown on the spear shaft here and then we'll I think uh, mix the radiant yellow into that with a little bit of our Indian yellow tool. Let me see what we get here. That's okay. There. Remember we said we we're gonna get some of that on our skelly friends here too. Again, just doing that little bit of dry brushy thing here. We're coming back in with our lighter lights again on those skellies. Especially since we're doing this. Again, it gives me a little bit of red there. Let me grab this guy and do the same while I have it here. Down there. All right, so he'll be uh, a little bit more in line with our uh, movement tray there. Maybe a little bit more of the uh, yellow-ish color. Maybe some of that up there. down in here and now I'll come back with that lighter and mostly a brilliant yellow pale here and maybe find some of the lightest uh, lights on our skelly friends blending brush always is handy though and any brush can be a blending brush. Could be a big old giant filbert brush. It could be, well, look at this, a little sort of a small craft brushes type thing. It's uh, got to be on the soft side, though. You want one that's definitely softer. Scaly friends here are getting a few more highlights. Uh, this away. These guys definitely need a little more light. Blending brush. Now what I'm going to do is just sort of let these have a chance to set for a bit here. I'll go back to my main figure. Because I don't want to keep pushing this too much. All right, got to let that set for at least a little bit here. So again, we've got some of our oh, skelly friends there. And look at that, more, more piles of skelly friends here. Skellies everywhere. It's almost like it's a uh, like you're watching jinxed stream or something that many skelly friends still not even at three hours yet and again big old miniature plus the movement tray with the oils and with Sarge how you doing there Sarge Thank you so much. All our rocks all melted in there. Now we got some new rocks we can shake in there. Thank you so much. I 
Uh, Sarge, hopefully everything went okay today. And uh, Sarge, look at this. Sarge was uh, kind enough to send cold hands this way. So looky there. We've been, uh, I just did a little bit here. We're going to set that aside. We're back to our main figure over here. So Sarge, sorry if, uh, well, obviously you can always uh, catch the, we'll have this done as a highlight, like always. So be able to see the uh, the earlier stages. We're, we're getting towards hour three here. We're getting towards hour three. So now, Sarge, was this Heroes Box 2 or Heroes Box 11? <laughs> because uh, I saw that numeral 2 and I thought, no way. And of course, uh, I do remember painting this. Yep, I painted this one actually on, well, either on stream or YouTube Live. Might have been a YouTube Live. I also, I did, uh, I don't know who that's supposed to be. I'd have to look at the card there, but I I did actually file it and prep it. Uh, prime it, sorry. And, uh, started the pre-glaze on this was real simple. It was basically just Van Dyke Brown. Uh, there was a little bit of the uh, Mars Black that went in there, and we're using the Mars Black from Gamlin this time around, just because I want to uh, try it out in, in more situations. I have to redo those little skellies down there. Just stuck my finger on them, that's okay. Okay. 